After spending a lot of time with the turret, one of the neatest benefits to learning to code with Mark Rober's hack pack is the Mark Robot AI feature. For example, my daughter who has never coded had a question about why a certain line of code isn't allowed to be changed. She put her question into the system and the AI was able to answer her question. It was actually a really impressive thing to see. But there were also three things that didn't go according to plan when I purchased the hack pack. Now I'm going to discuss them so you don't have the same issues I did as I talk about the overarching theme of the video. Do I think the hack pack service can actually teach my daughter how to code. Right out of the gate, the setup is very similar to Crunch Labs, which my son has been using now for over several months. The box comes in the mail, you open it up, and you get started. Initially, I noticed the wooden pieces of the hack pack seemed a bit sturdier and thicker than the Crunch Lab wood. And that's not a knock on Crunch Labs, because the hack pack box is certainly more expensive. I just mentioned it because it's nice, and it feels like a more expensive, perhaps a premium product. But with that being said, let's talk about the first problem we encountered, because it actually happened relatively quick into the build. The initial build went very smooth. I even attempted to help my dog with the build and she was like do you want me to help you? which is her polite way of saying, keep your grimy hands off of it. Nevertheless, over the next 30 minutes, she put the complete turret together 100% by herself. So after all the pieces were assembled, after all the wires were connected, we were ready to turn it on and fire our first shot. And this happened. Nothing, absolutely nothing. We went back, double and triple checked all of our connections. Everything seemed to be built and connected as instructed. I then started thinking, well, maybe it's the remote battery. I didn't think that would be the case. It's a brand new battery, and they even took the due diligence to put that plastic separator in it. You can see here the actual moment my daughter removes the plastic, so in theory, this should be a brand new battery that's never been used before. But after disconnecting, reconnecting, and doing everything we could, it was really the only thing left. The problem is the remote that comes with it doesn't have an indicator light on it, so I didn't know if the entire remote was busted or if it was just a bad battery. And of course, the battery that comes with it is a CR2025 button battery, and that's just not a common battery you're going to find laying around your house. Fortunately, however, there is a Battery Plus store that is not too far from where we live. After a quick trip out there, I was able to get another battery. I came home, we replaced the battery, and voila. It worked just like we thought it was going to right out of the box. And of course, the very first thing my daughter wanted to do was shoot the very person who actually bought her the hack pack in the first place. <laughs> as a show of gratitude. So it was time to proceed, and unfortunately that was the most minor of the three issues we encountered. And I want to take a moment at this point in the video to say this is going to be an overall positive review of Hackpack. My daughter and I are very happy that we got it. I'm just mentioning a few of the hiccups that we encountered that I think will probably help you in case you decide to get it for you or your family. See, one of the problems is, as a medical doctor, I know a lot about science. I also know quite a bit about making YouTube videos that nobody watches. But the problem is I don't know anything about coding. And in a world where artificial intelligence is about to take over, if it already hasn't, I would like my kids to know a little something about programming. So that's the main reason we bought it. But some of the issues are when things don't go exactly according to plan, I'm kind of at a loss as to how to help them. And the next problem we encountered was connecting the turret to the computer. It seems like an easy enough step, but it was really a struggle for me for a couple of reasons and let me explain why. When we connected the turret to the computer, no matter what we did, we couldn't get the computer to recognize the device. I'm not going to say I spent hours trying to fix the problem, but it was a frustratingly long amount of time before I figured out what was going on. Once I knew I was going to need help, I went to the fact page on the website. I then followed the somewhat cumbersome and tiny fonted written flowchart all the way down to the have you downloaded the program yet box. Well, I didn't know there was a program you had to download. Nowhere on the box does it say there's a program you have to download. When you go to the QR code, it takes you to the website and that's fine. On the instructions that come with it, Step one is literally start building the turret. Doesn't say anything about you're going to need to download a program. When you get to the last step, it literally says test, turn on and start firing. Nowhere in the booklet does it say you have to download a program. Now maybe if you just know the slightest bit of coding, that step is obvious, but I don't know anything about coding. That's like me teaching somebody how to brush their teeth and it's so obvious to unscrew the cap from the toothpaste that I don't mention it. Maybe that's a similar scenario. Maybe it's so obvious that you need the program, everybody's gonna know you have to download the program. I didn't know you had to download the program. But in an amazing coincidence, now when you go to the Hackpack website, Website, they have a big box that says, hey, you need to download the program, which is great. They fixed it, but it didn't solve my problem. Anyway, once I saw it on the FACT website, I went, I downloaded the program. Easy enough. I thought the problem would be solved. 
it wasn't. My computer would still not recognize the device. And I gotta be honest with you, I was getting a little frustrated at this point. So back to the fact sheet on the website, I was able to go down a different pathway now that I had downloaded the program and I got to a few boxes that talked about, well, perhaps maybe the connector I was using was a power only connector and not meant for data transfer. So I went all through my house and started bringing up different connectors and nothing changed. I even took the turret to a different computer, downloaded the program, still nothing at this point at the bottom of the frequently asked question page it says go to the discord for additional advice of course you can always email them and i was about to email them but part of me felt like if i emailed the company saying hey my turret's not talking to the computer and i build it perfectly what were they really going to be able to do for me so at this point based on the recommendations on the fact page i went to the discord and i gotta be honest with you if you go to a discord web page and you've never been to one before it's a little intimidating and i get it at this point i'm starting to sound like the old man in the room all these kids and their technology and they don't know any but you get the idea somewhere however deep down in the discord i saw where someone had written the web browser they were using was not compatible with the system and when they switched over everything was fine now this entire time i've been using safari the web browser they mentioned i wasn't familiar with it certainly wasn't a common one nevertheless i had been using the safari web browser on my macbook and the imac the entire time and i thought what the heck, I'll try Chrome. And wouldn't you know it, as soon as I switched to Chrome, everything just worked. Now the problem with Safari, maybe, I don't know, maybe it was just my computer. Clearly it's not a widespread issue because I feel like it would be written in bold letters on the website, not compatible with Safari. But then again, I also thought it'd be written in bold letters. You need to download this program before you get started but whatever. So at this point, after replacing the battery, after downloading the program, and after using Chrome, everything seems to be working just like it's supposed to. I brought my daughter back into the room. She was able to play with the code. The first thing she did, of course, was swap out the embedded code with the password code, and then made sure I was not looking at the password when she was putting it in. And then after that, she went to the next level and started playing around with the code a little bit differently. She was able to change the speed of the pitch and the roll, and it was really interesting and fun watching her do that. As I mentioned in the beginning, there's a line in the code that says, this line cannot be changed, even when you're under the tab where you can actually change a lot of the code. She actually took a moment and just wrote her question into the Mark Robot AI feature asking, why can you not change this line? And it told her. It was really cool. I don't know anything about coding. She had a question about coding. She was able to take that question, put it into the system, write her own question, and get her own personalized response. And I'm telling you right now, that is going to be 90% of the reason the hack pack system is worth it. Because if you don't know anything about coding, it will be able to walk your kids through it. Now we signed up for the yearly subscription service. Do I really think at the end of this year, my daughter's going to be able to code like a whiz? No. But do I think she's going to be comfortable with coding to the point where she can go to a generative artificial intelligence and have it write program for her and she'll be able to take that code, put it into her own microcontroller and make her own device? Yes. And that's what it's all about. In fact, my daughter doesn't know it yet. But I'm going to buy her a complete Arduino kit with its own microcontroller, a bunch of inputs and controllers. And I'm going to tell her her assignment is to just build something. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what she creates. In fact, I'll probably make a follow-up video in about six months telling you what she was able to create from the things that she learned from this service. So be sure and subscribe and follow along for that video. And I'll see you next time. Works pretty well.